Fruitful Living with Cecil Anderson. Here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. All right, if nothing else, that music bed is going to put a smile on your face this morning. We're talking about kindness, fruitful living, joy, all kinds of good stuff here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. And it is exactly 43 minutes after the hour, and we have a whole other hour after this. But uh, just want to remind you, today is Wednesday, July 31st, and we are in the 17th week in Ordinary Time. It's the feast day of St. Ignatius of Loyola, and this is the segment every Wednesday when Keith talks to Cecil Anderson with her segment called Fruitful Living. I love the topic today. Because Cecil is going to talk about something. I guarantee everybody listening right now has been in a position before where somebody says, hey, can you lead us in prayer? And you're in a group situation, and you either like, yeah, I can't wait to do that, or it makes you kind of nervous. So, Cecil, great topic. Good morning. How are you? I am doing well, Dave. Good morning. It's exciting to join you um, on uh, for morning joy. Normally you're not the one hosting this, so it's a little bit funny because you and I do a lot of on-air work, but not in this capacity these days. So yeah, it's okay. a lot of fun. If you call me Keith, it's going to be all right. Okay, that's a good, good. Okay, so no, no problem at all. I know it's a little, it's an adjustment for everybody this week. Yeah, all right, so how'd you come up with this topic? Well, you know, I was just thinking, um, I, I help with young adult ministry at my parish, right? And uh, in that, I always try to make sure that we begin and end a formation night with prayer and I love, you know, I love it when it's not my own voice that's being heard all the time. (laughs) I love when it's not me that's having to pray all the time because I like to be able to, you know, have life lessons be imparted and faith lessons to all the others so they can feel confident in praying. But, man, nothing quiets a room. Nothing quiets that room like me saying, okay, who wants to lead us an opening prayer? And it's just dead silent. They will be chatting away, chatting away, just having the time of their lives. I say that, silence. And nobody's going to have eye contact no, with exactly. you at that moment, right? It's something like the cracks on the wall became so interesting. Like, it's so funny. And it cracks me up every time. And I keep saying, guys, it's okay. Like, you can offer to pray. I'm not sitting here to judge your prayer. I'm judging you right now because you're not offering to pray, but I'm not going to judge you on how you pray. Um, and so I realize that that's a pretty common thing um, across the board, I think. I, I, probably young adults a little bit more because they're a little bit earlier in their spiritual journey, so they feel less comfortable being able to lead a prayer. But I do believe that there is something, um, some sort of pressure I think we put on ourselves when it comes to spontaneous prayer. Maybe you who are listening right now, this does not apply to you, but I bet there's a lot of people who it does where, you know, you're in that Bible study or you're in that um, that, that uh, formation night that you're at at your church or, or even just like a dinner party or something. And someone says, you know, Dave, do you want to lead us an opening prayer? <laughs> and then and the fear, the fear that just runs through you. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, no, uh, you're like, all these eyes are on me. What if I mess this up? And I just kind of wanted to establish what exactly spontaneous prayer is and, you know, not, give some tips on, you know, to give you more confidence in doing it, but also just assure you that spontaneous prayer is not about perfection. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, and it's really for everyone to do. I grew up Protestant, so I grew up with a lot of spontaneous prayer. That was like the prayer that I knew, the only prayer that I knew. We in the Catholic Church have some amazing, like memorized prayers, some like written standard prayers that we have. We have the rosary, and we have the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers and the Glory Bees, the Magnificats. There's just um, so many beautiful prayers you can use. Um, But there's something really beautiful too about just speaking of whatever is on your heart and your mind. And in our prayer life, we should probably have a variety of these things. You should be, you know, saying your rosary, but you should also be able to um, just kind of just talk from your heart and say, Lord, this is what's going on in my life. So I, that's one thing, you know, that there's this idea that you know, these beautiful prayers that we have that are already written, I think puts that pressure on us that, well, that's the Hail Mary is so beautiful. Me being like, Lord, help. I don't know what to do. Just doesn't sound as pretty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's just as important because we're being very honest with God, because ultimately at the end of the day, prayer time and prayer is all about talking with God because our relationship with God is just that it's a relationship. And so, um, so I think when people are like, oh, I have to, you have to lead in front of a group of people. You get into this um, situation of, I am scared I'm going to mess this up. Um, And I understand that. I have messed up many a spontaneous prayer that I've said in public. I have literally been mid-praying and going, I don't remember what I was going to (laughs) say. I literally have had to say like, uh, yeah, lost my train of thought and just go on to the next thing. (laughs) And that is so okay. Um, Because at the end of the day, 
we are very um, flawed people who are just trying to, you know, offer up our petitions to God. But that being said, I mean, Dave, do you do you get nervous getting asked to pray? Or you've been doing this for a while, so you probably yeah. Maybe not. I wouldn't say I get nervous, but you know, the thing is that uh, I wanted you to maybe comment on as well is that when you pray with other people it's easy to kind of default to you're really yeah. talking to them and not to God. Yes. And I do that oh, like in the, yes. in the evening, you know, when we pray as a family, I'll say, oh, you know, I want to pray for, you know, you know I talk about my, my daughters and what's going on in their life. And, and I'm trying to get everybody in mm-hmm. and, you know, Patrick and his day tomorrow. And what I'm really doing is speaking to them and not really right. to God. So right. it's, it's easy to, like, to kind I really of hope confuse. my daughter like yeah. starts making her bed. <laughs> like, you know, Lord, please help. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so like, who's the audience here? But right. well, I've gotten used to it. It doesn't really make me nervous, but I don't know that I'm that good at it. Sure. It's, you know, that, that is something that you have to be good at. Right. So I want to establish that it doesn't need to be perfect, but I do think that we can always be practicing at it. Right. We are not perfect Catholics. We're practicing Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can always have room for improvement. Not that what you have done previously is bad, but maybe if you need some encouragement or like a formula of some sort, because formulas make us feel a little bit more secure. And there definitely is formula in prayer. Um, I there's a lot of there's a lot of resources. A lot of people have different ideas. There's like different acronyms like acts or or various things to talk about what you should say in your spontaneous prayer. But I even made it even more simple than that. And I have three questions. Who, why and what? Hmm. Just those three things. Okay. So number one, who? Who are you talking to? (laughs) Who are you talking to and how do you address him? And um, because there's a lot of great ways that we can, you know, when we're talking to God, you can say God, the Father Almighty, you know, or dear Jesus, uh, my Lord, my God. There's a lot of ways you can start off off a prayer. And that's a really important part because it does add um, remembering that respect that we should be having for our Lord. I mentioned it's a relationship. Our Lord is like our closest friend, but he's not the same as like a friend that we have here. We're not going to be like, Hey dude, what's up? That's not how we're going to start our prayer. (laughs) So we start with who, who are we talking to? Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. You got to find whatever makes, you know, most sense to you. You could just literally just be dear Lord, um, dear Jesus, whatever it may be. And then the why, why are we praying to him? And that's not, necessarily to say why are we um, praying to him right now but why are we praying to him like why do we pray to god and i say this because we should always in our prayer in our spontaneous prayer praise him and thank him so you should say something along the lines of dear lord you know thank you for this opportunity i have to you know speak with my uh, my fellow sisters in our bible study thank you for this you know, wonderful day. You are the Lord, you know, everything, Um, you know, we praise you and whatever it may be that you want to throw in there. There's a lot of great resources, by the way, the Psalms are a great way. If you want to come up with like one Mm -hmm. verse from the Psalms that you can use in your spontaneous prayer to praise him. So that's why you're praying to him because he is God. He is the Lord almighty and he deserves our praise and thanks. And then finally, what it's the petitions. What are you at? What are you praying for? What are you asking for? Um, And especially if I'm leading it for like a formation night or for a Bible study or anything like that, I'll just do something along the lines of, you know, Please bless this time that we have together. Watch over all of our, you know, friends who are not here tonight. And for those who, um, for all of us traveling and all of us to bring us back together, make this time really to be centered on you and not us. Um, and those sort of things. Um, and then just whatever prayer request you might have. And then you can end it. And it's very simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. So who, why, and what? What do you think about that, Dave? I think that is uh, some very good tips. I appreciate it very much. Cecil Anderson giving us some tips on spontaneous prayer. Uh, Tim said that he recently spoke to a Dominican priest and said, there's no way to mess up prayer. Any attempt to pray is a successful Mm. prayer. You know, it's like if you have a friend or a child and they come up and want to communicate with you, you're not going to be judging, you know, what they say. If they have a, a genuine desire to communicate with you and express what's on their mind, I think we're going to honor that. So uh, it's great. I also think about, you know, we have these committee meetings, Cecil, Mm -hmm. and I, I, when at the end of the meeting, I always say, hey, who'd like to lead us in a prayer? And I I always default to our our friend, Steve Gleason. You know, he's one of the hosts of The Quest, and he used to be a 
Well, he grew up Catholic, but he used to be a Protestant pastor, mm-hmm. and he just, I mean, he's very good at spontaneous prayer, yeah. <laughs> so the default is always to go to the guy or the, the woman who's good at it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, growing up Protestant, we used to have these, like, prayer nights every week um, where you get together with different families, and uh, the men and women would usually separate when we had these specifically uh, prayer nights where you'd go around and say your prayer requests, and then, then it would just be like, okay, someone would open up in prayer, and then each person would jump in and add their prayers as well whenever they wanted, and I'm not going to lie it would sometimes be like 20 30 minutes and i do think as a child i was like okay are we done yet? <laughs> are we done yeah. yet uh, it was very beautiful but it gave me a great uh experience for um when it was like for what how people spoke to god and it was a very beautiful like witness in that way um especially when it came to more of my like private personal time maybe don't do 30 minutes of uh of prayer in, in in the public when your bible study is 45 minutes long and they right. ask you to open in prayer um but but have confidence in doing it and and next time that someone asks you you know ask the group who wants to lead us in prayer Jump in and be like, I will do it. And if it doesn't go exactly how you want it to go, that is okay. Because like Tim said, that priest said that um, it's always beautiful and it is always worth the effort that you're putting in. Yeah. Also, cool thing about being Catholic is that we have all these backup prayers. Yes. So if you do get stuck yes, start and you just say, you know, <laughs> glory be to the Father and the Son or the, of course, the Our Father is in Scripture and the Hail Mary and the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. Uh, just just kind of start the rosary yeah, if you want yeah, to, right? The, yeah. Commit everyone to the rosary. It's great. No, no, I, I, I entirely agree, Dave. There's always, you can go on that backup and, and ending your spontaneous prayer with one of those prayers is such a good idea too yeah well that is a really great topic and i think it's something that you know like like you said being a grown-up protestant it came a little bit easier to you but a lot of catholics because we have so much rote prayer it's it's challenging but it does have a lot to do with that relationship with god and just speaking to him as a friend like you said and so very cool appreciate it very much so that was a great topic thank you of course definitely and i like you mentioned dave the more you are in your faith and the more you're praying um, you will find it easier, I think, um, especially if you're doing Prosvantini's prayer with God one-on-one. So this week or today sometime, I'm challenging you to find an opportunity to do like five minutes of spontaneous prayer with yourself or if you're in a group that you can lead a spontaneous prayer, do that. I'm empowering you. All right. Empowered <laughs> and challenged. That brings us to the end of the first hour of Morning Joy, where truth matters. Thanks so much. we got another hour. We've got a great uh, guest, Dr. Ken Buckle, coming up. And also Word of the Day, news, a whole lot more after the break. Thanks. God bless you. And have a great couple minutes until we see you again. <laughs> This has been Morning Joy, where truth matters. Hosted by Keith Downey. Take some joy with you today. Visit grnonline.com slash joy to listen again. Share a segment or answer the question of the day. That's grnonline.com slash joy.